And then you moved to lawyers. <laughs> yes. And then I left that exciting life to work at a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's interesting to me is um, you worked at the law firm as the marketing and communications director or somewhere along those lines. I might be getting the verbiage uh, not correct, but how are you able to sell yourself into that role coming out of broadcast news? For Fraser Trebilcock, I think one of the biggest selling points was that I had worked on the other side of the media. Who better to sell your story to the media and get you that media coverage than someone who was on the receiving end and deciding on those stories? Also, you know, I'll speak for the, my fellow journalists out there, and, and you come from, from a TV background, right? So mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of transferable skills. I mean, every single day you're, you're interviewing, you're problem solving, you're making critical decisions at the height of deadlines. And so I, I really think that any journalist brings a lot to the table when it comes to making a transition, but especially in a communications field like that. And I think the law firm was a really good fit for me because as you're covering stories, there's a lot of explaining to do. You know, anytime, you know, we're, we're governed by our laws, right? And so you need that thought leadership, those experts to be able to bring down to layman's terms what's happening and, and how it affects all of us. So for me, that was a relatively easy transition. The other thing that I really brought to the law firm was I worked in newsrooms when we were figuring out how to incorporate Twitter and Facebook and other social media platforms into the mix. I remember having editorial meetings where we sat down and we thought, okay, it, you know, what are we going to do with Facebook? Like, are we going to allow, uh, this was the conversation, we're going to allow our reporters to be on Facebook. And very quickly that conversation changed to, oh no, we should be breaking news on Facebook. We should be selling our personalities on Facebook. Initially, those conversations were very much, you know, how do we use this? Is this a threat? Is this something we incorporate? What do we do with this? So to take it from what it was then to what it is now and actually using it for business purposes and branding and, you know, selling our products and services, that was something that at the time the law firm really needed. So that was something I was able to bring to the firm. You really hit on the theme of story to this point. What, how did the story change when you went from what you were doing on a daily basis for the overall community to specifically this law firm community, this legal community? How'd you shape the story there? For me personally, and this is going to sound like I'm, I'm making it up, but it's true, I felt like I was still helping the community. I, I genuinely did. I mean, I worked with really excellent attorneys who really care about their clients and care about their community. They give back. They you know, do pro bono work. They're just really involved in, in many ways. And so for me, it was an easy transition because you know a topic would come up and I felt like, okay, we can help with that. And, and in a way, I felt like we had a responsibility to be able to give back to the community. I mean, we have you know, a law firm full of all of this expertise and this knowledge, and we have people out there who need it. So how can we connect those two together? And at the same time, it organically helps to grow the business of, of the practice of law, which was what my job was and what I was tasked to do. So for me, it was, it was a relatively easy thing to make that transition. The hardest part was my first week, and you know, it's like, okay, suddenly I have my own office. I'm not in a newsroom with like tons of people around and tons of noise and phones ringing and music playing and scanners going. And I'm in my office and it's like silent. I was like, what do I do with this silence? <laughs> you know, and without people everywhere. So that was actually the strangest transition the first few weeks. You find yourself just talking to yourself or screaming or... Music. I played music all the time. You have to have that background, that white noise. But yeah, I still, I, I mean, just like in news when you read your scripts out loud because you need to hear how it sounds. I People would walk by my office and I'd be sitting there on my computer reading out loud. Same thing. Old habits never die. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> if they work, it's just the, these tools aren't broken. So that's the way you get you get from uh, that's the way you know you so right that's exactly. the way it happens yeah. I mean was there times where you had to feel like you, I mean you know the stigma of uh, lawyers and stuff like that did you have to battle that or did you have to uh, you know you know because people have some opinions about how lawyers are and what they do. I know, kind of like they do about the media, yeah, right? exactly. I know, I just moved from one <laughs> one stigma to the next. No, I didn't I didn't actually really face that very much. Um, I think because I was fortunate enough to work at a law firm that, you know, has been in Lansing for over 130 years and really has a strong reputation, um, or maybe people just kept their lawyer jokes to themselves, I don't know. <laughs> but it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't an issue for me. Oh, well, cool. How do you really feel about social media? That is a good question. That is a loaded question. 
-hmm. right? Because yeah, as I, you know, absolutely. my dad who, you know, likes to joke and complain about Facebook, even though he doesn't have an account, he's always on my mom's and likes to, you know, one of those, one of those, right? Yeah. And it's like, I have to remind him, but dad, I make money off of Facebook now and helping businesses with social media. It's tough. It's hard when, you know, with our generation, we've, we remember, of course, what it was like before social media and what life was like and just how much things have changed since then. I have differing opinions on uh, it definitely has changed society in many ways. It's changed how everything from how people communicate with each other to how people date to, you know, you name it, it's just changed so much. And I don't know that all of it's for the better, but there really isn't much we can do about it. So just kind of social media in general. And I just think that we have to be smart about continuing to connect with people in person, face to face, and not just doing it through social media. Um, so things like that, I think, are more of our burden to bear than the platforms. It's, it's on how we use them. So, I mean, in general, I actually really do, and I'm not just saying this because it's part of my business, but I really do think that social media has changed us for the better. I know that there are the downsides, of course, but if you look at how we're able to connect, look at how we're able to give back, look at how nonprofits can raise money um, just by sharing some posts and some inspiring stories and people can reach out when they need help versus, you know, and, and stay in, in contact with each other. Things that we couldn't do before. So I think we just have to focus on those positives and the things we don't like, we have to do something about.